Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavalava Givaradari Gopi Janavalava Givaradari Yasoda Nandana Rajajana Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Rajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Om Vishnu Paramahamsa Paribhakshari Shishi Madhis Divine Grace Sesi Bhakti Vananta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Kodi Vaishnava Vindhi Ki Jai Namachari Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Rema Ho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Nanda Shri Advaita Gauradhar Shri Vasidhi Gaur Bhakti Vindhi Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopi Gopana Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Gidi Gopadani Ki Jai Vandavan Dhami Ki Jai Naudit Dhami Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai Talasi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakti Vindhi Jai Go Prem Nandi All Glory Simul Devotees all glory to the devotees. All glory to the devotees. All glory to Shishi, Guru, and Goranga. Glory to Shil Prabhupada. Okay. So we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Ninth Canto, Chapter 3, Text 10. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sukanya chavanam prapya Batim paramakopanam Prinayam asachitagya Apramatanu vrittibi Someone could chant. Thank you. 
Marijis. The girl named Sukanya, the daughter of King Shariati. Chavanam, the great sage Chanavamuni. Prapya, after obtaining. Patim, as her husband. Paramakopanam, who was always very angry. Prinayam asa. She satisfied him. Jityagya. Understanding the mind of her husband. Aparamata anuvritibi. By executing services without being bewildered. Translation Chanavamuni was very irritable, but since Sukanya had gotten him as her husband, she dealt with him very he, she dealt with him carefully according to his mood. Knowing his mind, she performs service to him without being bewildered. Report. This is an indication of the relationship between husband and wife. A great personality like Chanavana Muni has the temperament of always wanting to be in a superior position. Such a person cannot submit to anyone. Therefore, Chanavana Muni had an irritable temperament. His wife's uh, Sukanya could understand his attitude and under the circumstances she treated him accordingly. If any wife wants to be happy with her husband, she must try to understand her husband's temperament and please him. This is victory for a woman. Even in the dealings of Lord Krishna with his different queens, it has been seen that, that although the queens were the daughters of great kings, they placed bef uh, themselves before Lord Krishna as his maidservants. However great a woman may be, she must place herself before her husband in this way. That is to say, she must be ready to carry out the husband's orders and please him in all circumstances. Then her life will be successful. When the wife becomes as irritable as the husband, their life at home is sure to be disturbed or ultimately completely broken. In the modern day, the wife is never submissive and therefore home life is broken even by slight inc incidents. Either the wife or the husband may take advantage of the divorce laws. 
According to the Vedic law, however, there is no such thing as divorce laws, and a woman must be trained to be submissive to the will of her husband. Westerners contend that this is, that this is a slave mentality for the wife, but factually it is not. It is a tactic by which a woman can conquer the heart of her husband, however, however irritable or cruel he may be. But in this case, we clearly see that although Chavana Muni was not young, but indeed old enough to be Sukanya's grandfather, he was also very irritable. Uh, Sukanya, the beautiful, beautiful young daughter of a king, submitted herself to, the, to her old husband and tried to please him in all respects. Thus, she was a faithful and chaste wife. Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Bastaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharni Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Bhaskachate Shatarane So, uh, as is mentioned here in the purport, that the wife should uh, serve her husband faithfully. Uh, this is mentioned in the third canon of Srimad Bhagavatam that the, uh, that the wife should understand uh, that the husband always wants to be in a superior position as constituted by his bodily frame. And so if she understands that and, and serves him faithfully, uh, even though sometimes uh, he may be wrong, uh, and she should, uh, she should uh, not, uh, she should tolerate it, and thus there will be no misunderstanding between the husband and the wife. So this is, in Vedic culture, this was a system that uh, the women were uh, trained to be chaste and faithful to the husband, and uh, they were trained to be chaste and faithful to the husband. Prabhu mentions this in, uh, in Chicago, and it was at the 10th of... Uh, June 1975, he said, in, in our Guru Kula, uh, the women should learn two things, uh, to be uh, chaste and faithful to the husband and to uh, cook nicely. Uh, in this way, Prabhupada said, I uh, personally guarantee that they will get a good husband. So uh, this is what in the society uh, the boys, uh, they're not so much inclined to marry, uh, they're not so much inclined to marry an unchaste wife. They're not so much inclined to marry... Uh, I can't... Uh, so, anyway, so, uh, boys are not so inclined to accept an unchaste wife. Uh, therefore, they're, they're not inclined to marry like that. Uh, but even if, if the woman is uh, uh, chaste, uh, even though she may not be very beautiful, she is liked by the husband. So this is the important qualification of a wife is chastity, uh, as it is uh, said uh, that uh, there's diff different living entities are diff have different qualities of beauty. And for the cuckoo bird, even though it's, it's blackish, it's considered to be very beautiful because of its voice. And uh, a man, although he may be very ugly, if he's very learned, uh, that is his beauty. And a woman is beauty because of her chastity. So this is a very important uh, chastity in Vedic culture. So... Uh, People think that this, this uh, chastity or this is just like, like Prabhupada mentioned the purport, they, uh, they, they take this as uh, slavery like that. Uh, but actually, uh, w in Krishna consciousness and Veda culture, we don't treat women as slaves. They're, uh, they're offered great respect. Uh, the sons offer their mother the greatest respect. And the husbands protect... Uh, their wives, even Lord Ramachandra, uh, he was, uh, his wife was kidnapped and he destroyed the whole dynasty of Ravana just because of, uh, the, uh, he kidnapped his wife. So he, can, uh, he could have, uh, you know, 
just forgot about it and just get another wife. But no, he, had a, he protected his wife. So in this way, the wife has to be protected in all circumstances. And her, she has her duties uh, to t take care of the family, uh, the household affairs, and take care of the children. Uh, not that she has to go out and uh, earn her livelihood. Uh, Prabhupada also mentions this, that how if a woman in the presence of her father, elder brother, or husband has to earn a livelihood, uh, this is a great insult to women. So, uh, and also it's uh, in New Vindavan, when Prabhupada was in last time in New Vindavan, uh, they were outside and Prabhupada asked, oh, the, because uh, they Prabhupada asked if the devotees didn't have sufficient clothing, and, and Kaladri, who was a temple president at the time, he said, oh, we're, we're, we're fine, Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, he said, no, you should, you should ask the women if they have, if they have uh, you know, what they need. He said, every month you should ask them what they need, because they will not say. You should ask them. So in this way, the women should be taken care of, and th then things will go on very nicely. And then... Uh, they're, they're given protection, uh, not freedom, but protection. Uh, women have three stages of life. Uh, they are protected in, a, in, their, in their childhood by their father, uh, in their youth by their, their husband, and in their uh, uh, old age by their son. So we see this uh, meant in, in so many places, uh, like Kunti Devi. Uh, Kunti Devi was a great devotee of the Lord. Uh, but still, she she stayed under the protection of her 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 sons, like that. So this is the the, the dharma of a woman to stay under the protection of her her, her grown-up sons or a husband or a father, like that. So uh, so this is they're not considered slaves. Even there's one uh, American uh, lady. She was uh, secretary of Dr. Misra. And she says, in India, the women are, are like slaves. We don't, li we don't like that. And Prabhupada's reply at that time was, it's better to remain a slave of one than to be, uh, remain a slave of many, like that. So in other words, uh, women are protected. Uh, then uh, they want to be independent. And then, but they simply, then they just go beg from the government, uh, beg from, Prabhupada said they beg from door to door. Uh, give me shelter, give me a child like this. So this is condemned. Uh, we have to set a good example and uh, like that. So, so this is important. Uh, women, by protecting the women, there'll be good population. And then, uh, then people will know what they have to do in life. A Brahmana acts like a Brahmana. A Kshatriya acts like a Kshatriya, a Vaishya acts like a Vaishya, and a Sudra will act like a Sudra. But if the society is chaotic, uh, then there can be no peace in society, and then they can't make progress. And Prabhupada mentions in this connection that uh, only a devotee could become peaceful, or you could only become a devotee if you're peaceful. So this is very important to become, uh, follow this, this Vedic process. So, uh, just by becoming chaste and faithful to the husband, even if the wife is not so advanced in spiritual life, if she's sincere and faithful, then she gets half the activities of her husband. So Prabhupada mentions this in the uh, sixth canon of Shimon Bhagavatam. So in Kali Yuga, uh, marriage is simply, uh, as mentioned in the 12th Kano Shima Bhagavatam, that marriage is simply based on sex life. If there is a disturbance in sex life or sex power, then uh, there's divorce uh, in the marriage like that. So this is uh, superficial uh, understanding of what marriage is, is about. Uh, formerly, it was, it was uh, the parents they used to arrange uh, for their, their uh, sons and daughters to get married, especially for the daughters, and they would consult, consult astrologically if it was a good match, 
and like that, and if they were compatible, it's not simply uh, liking, you know, because if, 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 if something's based simply on liking, then the ne next moment you'll dislike it. So it has to have some substantial uh, uh, compatibility like that. So in, in astrology, problem mentions there's different personalities. Somebody's of a demoniac quality and somebody's of a godly quality. So if you marry a, a boy and a girl that have, if one has a demoniac quality and one has a godly quality, then there'll be uh, difficulties. So in this way, uh, these things have to uh, be understood. As Prabhupada mentions in the 10th Kano Shima Bhagavatam, that the uh, parents should be, uh, understand the, the, the horoscopes of their children like that. So in this way, they should act accordingly. So uh, Kali Yuga, it's, Generally, this, this divorce is going on. This is uh, the first uh, fault, promises in society. And he also mentions that uh, in connection with Lord Shiva and Sati, uh, like she was, uh, she wanted to go to her father's house, and Lord Shiva told her not to do so. That, that would be not good for her. Uh, but she left anyway. So in that connection, she will probably mentions that uh, generally divorce is uh, generally divorce takes place because of we the weakness of a woman like that. She's weak, weak-hearted like that. So it generally takes place because of the woman. So uh, they have to be tolerant and they have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, become Krishna conscious. So. So the purpose, the whole purpose of marriage is to have a son because a son saves the father from a hellish condition if he happens to fall in a hellish condition. So uh, one becomes, uh, gets married, he has children, and then he has to train his children to become devotees of Krishna. Because uh, if he doesn't, then how could they actually save him if he c gets in a difficult situation? So in this way, uh, he should train his children in Krishna consciousness. Then if somehow or another he, f he falls down, then the son could save his father uh, from death, from hell. From hell. And uh, it's stated that, uh, that in the ninth canon of Shema Bhagavatam, that it's the son who saves the father, not the mother. Uh, so if the mother... Uh, is, is connected to the father, then she also gets delivered. But if she's separated from the father, if they have divorce, then uh, she, doesn't got, she doesn't get delivered. It's only the uh, father who gets delivered. So this is a situation. Although Prabhupada did say, in connection with his disciples, this was in July the 5th, 1975, that he said all the... Uh, all the mothers and fathers of my disciples will become liberated. He said, uh, somehow or another, they have produced a Vaishnava son, so uh, they, they get, the, res they get uh, the good results of his activities, and it's quite natural that the son uh, thinks of his parents. Even, even one may be in the renounced order of life. Family affections is so strong that once one sometimes thinks of his family. Uh, so uh, in this way, they are benefited uh, like that. The parents are benefited from that situation. So the, so the purpose is to marry, uh, marriage is to have a son. Uh, Sheila Prabhupada wrote this, uh, wrote this to uh, Donavir in 1972. Uh, he said... Uh, the only purpose of marriage is to have the facility for sex life, to have a child. Otherwise, what's the use of taking so much botheration? So we have to understand what the purpose of marriage is and uh, utilize it for Krishna consciousness like that. Otherwise, uh, better just to stay brahmachari like that because this is more advantageous to spiritual life. But one shouldn't be artificial. And uh, if one wants to get married, if one has this desire, then one should 
uh, be a devotee, be grihastra, the different ashrams, brahmachari, grihastra, vanapras, and sannyas. So uh, from brahmachari, uh, one could go into the, uh, accept the grihastra ashram, but one could also accept the sannyas ashram from the brahmachari, just like Srila Prabhupada mentions about his spiritual master, uh, Srila Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Thakur. Uh, he accepted uh, sannyasa ashram directly from the brahmacharya ashram. So, so but in any, any condition of life one is in, whether one's a, a householder or a or brahmachari, uh, the main thing is one is a devotee of Krishna. It's, it's better it's better to be a devotee of Krishna. Uh, even Lord Chaitanya showed by his own example uh, that he took instructions. Uh, from Ramananda Roy, uh, who, was, uh, who was a householder and was considered in the Sudra class. So, and, and he made uh, Haridas Thakur, who was born in Manhattan family, uh, the Acharya, the holy name. So this is the main thing to become a devotee. It doesn't matter what ashram you're in, uh, what situation of life is uh, one's in, uh, you know, People who think uh, that a devotee is born in a certain family or he belongs to a particular class, this person considered to be, is considered to be a resident of hell. Uh, so some people criticize like that. They criticize like that. They say, "Oh, you know, this this is uh, he's a brahmana. He could preach Krishna conscious. He's born in a brahmana family. Uh, this this devotee wasn't born in a brahmana family. Therefore." He's not qualified to preach Krishna consciousness. Uh, but we, we should understand such a person is uh, envious of the devotees of the Lord, and they cannot make any spiritual advancement. So, uh, so as Pop mentions this divorce, it's very... Even in this own in this cha chapter later on, it's mentioned about divorce. He said, if a woman divorces her husband, then she becomes responsible for the degradation of her her father's family and her husband's family. He mentions that this even in the higher caste today, the brahmanas, uh, the shatis and vaishas don't engage in such activities as is as this divorce. It's only done among the sudra class. So, uh, uh, we also understand that there are four kinds of enemies. Uh, there are the, the father who is in debt. So, if a father dies, he, he owes, uh, he's in debt, then the son has to pay that debt. At least in India, it's like that. That if you, because that when, you, when your father passes away, then you inherit his property. So it's not that you just inherit the property, but you also inherit his debts. So in this way, if your father dies with debts, then you have to pay that. So he's considered one of the types of enemies. And another kind of enemy is the a son who is a rascal. So uh, he's simply a disturbance in society, and of course, there's no question of him, him delivering his, his parents because he's simply a rascal. So he's considered an enemy. And uh, a wife is considered an enemy if she is beautiful because uh, one will always be in anxiety uh, who is after her like that. And another type of enemy is a mother who marries for the second time. So this, these are the four types of enemy. And also, uh, this is mentioned, uh, women marrying more than once or having more than one husband is also mentioned by Prabhupada. In 1976, in a Bhagavatam lecture, twice he mentions this in September and October. I believe it was in Vindavan. He mentions about Kunti, Devi, and Draupadi. So uh, Draupadi had five husbands, one child from each husband. And, uh, and Kunti Devi had, uh, she had different uh, sons from different demigods. She had... Uh, Arjun from Indra and Bhima from uh, Vayu and uh, Yudhisthira from Dharmaraj, uh, like that. So, uh, but this this uh, this situation, of course, we understand that also 
Kunti was a, a great soul. We can't imitate great souls. Just like the sun uh, is very powerful. It could just, you know, it could purify even a, a filthy place like that. Uh, so they were very powerful personalities. But also Prabhupada quoted this, this uh, verse and uh, this mentioned in the Chaitanya Charter Mita Adi Leela 17, I think it's 164, that there's five acts forbidden in the age of Kali. Uh, the uh, offering a cow or a horse in sacrifice, uh, the offering of flesh to the forefathers, uh, taking sannyas and a brother begetting children and his brother's wife. So these are the five types of uh, things that are forbidden in the age of Kali, which probably mentions a connection with uh, Draupadi and Kunti accepting more than one husband. So, so sometimes these arguments go on between the, the, uh, the husband and wife, but these should be not taken very seriously. Uh, the example is given of uh, if you have two goats and they're fighting with each other, and you just say, hut, and they just, uh, just you know, go away from each other like that. Or if uh, you, see, you hear some rumbling of clouds in the morning time, then you don't take it seriously. You know there won't be any rain. And if there is some sages in the forest performing the Shraddha ceremony, you should understand they're, just, they're simply going to have a few uh, like flowers and leaves, not a very elaborate ceremony like many people during uh, the marriage ceremony and, and the Shraddha ceremony, especially those two ceremonies, they expend very lavishly for those two ceremonies. But in the forest, the sages simply have a few leaves and a few flowers like that. And, uh, and also the uh, husband and wife, if there's some disagreement between the two, uh, then they should, uh, then it, it shouldn't be taken very seriously like that. So these are the principles uh, mentioned in Vedic literature and uh, we should follow them. Uh, sometimes, you know, and according to our circumstances, sometimes we come to Krishna conscious and we, 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 we went, with, went through so many uh, crazy things and like that, but uh, we have to take Prabhupada's instructions and specifically we have to train the next generation properly like that. The children should uh, go to devotee schools and get proper training. In this way, uh, they could become Krishna conscious and, and, and create a, a, the next generation which will be uh, devotees like that. And uh, so this uh, in Varnashrama, uh, Prabhupada mentioned, uh, this is in February of 1977, that he said what we are doing now uh, is on a small scale. But if we want to make the whole world Krishna conscious, then we have to uh, take up this Varnashrama like that. He said it should be done immediately and uh, is possible and people will become happy. So, and, and when he first brought this up in 19, March of 1974, uh, he mentioned that by this Varnashrama, we may, will make uh, counter-propaganda counter against Maya. But Maya is also uh, very strong. She'll make propaganda against you. And if you're not, if you're not strong, you'll succumb. So in Daiviyeshu Guna Maimi Mama Maya Durat Yaya Mama Eva Ye Pabanyante Maya Me Tantarantite. This divine energy of mind, consisting of the three modes of material nature, is very difficult to overcome, but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. So we have to become very strong, and then we could cross over this Maya. And so we have to become strong by taking uh, guidance, taking instructions from the spiritual master, and this way we may remain strong in Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada brought up this point, and approximately three months later here in Los Angeles, uh, on a morning walk, uh, one devotee uh, named Madhukanta, he asked this about, pro uh, this, uh, uh, re uh, mentioned to, this him, uh, to Prabhupada again about this, you know, making counter propaganda against Maya, and Prabhupada said yes, and he mentioned about, you know, we should become Krishna conscious, and not that we become uh, disciples of Kali. Like he's mentioned, Bhakti Thakur says, there's one somebody who's wearing tilak 
and he has neck, neck beads, uh, but he is simply a disciple of Kali. He is, uh, he is doing a bhajan with illicit sex, and behind him are, uh, are, uh, behind him are three dozen women like that. So after saying this, uh, it was Balavaska. He said, oh, Prabhupada, does this mean we, we should follow the principles? And Prabhupada said, I've been saying this for 12,000 years. I'm always saying this. And still you are questioning? So it's just simply a matter of following the process. And uh, then these things will, will gradually uh, fall into place. We just have to fight. Uh, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, do thou f fight for the sake of fighting without considering happiness, distress, loss of gain, victory, and defeat. In this way, you will not incur sin. So these things may seem very, very difficult. To follow the instructions of Srila Prabhupada seem, it may seem very difficult, especially many of the preaching programs that he wanted us to perform. Uh, distribute books, uh, start vonner from colleges, all these things. It seems like it's impossible, but we just have to try our, our best. You know, the, you know, as Krishna says, do thou fight for the sake of fighting. You know, he didn't, he didn't say to Arjun, just sit back on the chariot and smoke marijuana and I'll just do all the fighting. No, he said, you should, you should fight. So that's our, that's our duty. We should fight. And, uh, and then Krishna will take care, of take care of everything. So we can stop there. Are there any questions on these points? Okay, yes, uh, Sachin Noy. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Ravindra Prabhu. Thank you, very good. Uh, a lot of statements there. Um, sometimes are kind of a little bit difficult to understand. It might be difficult, um, given the case that we're in Kali Yuga. Everybody is a sudra. Barnas Randharm is not been established, and we're just hanging on the mercy of Sila Prabhupada. Uh -huh. So, uh, for example, uh, I know many devotees a few devotees who have a lot of daughters, they don't have a son, supposedly to be saved by the son. And we know sometimes devotees who have many sons, but the sons are not practicing, they're living outside. Unfortunately, some of them became like karmis. Mm -hmm. But they, they, themsel they themselves, the parents, they're following properly. I've seen some of them. And another observation is that I've seen sometimes, and I know, sometimes, you know, married two times, three times, and some cases even four times, which husband is going to save that woman? And so given the case of that, is it correct? So it's a question, and maybe you reconfirm this, that because the fact of Kali Yuga, the fact that no one has is Brahminical, and Prabhupada came and gave us all this knowledge, we're supposed to follow, obviously. Wouldn't it be proper to say that chanting the holy name of the Lord and hanging to the, and being attached to the orders of the spiritual master, following properly, these other things might be solved, like not having a son, like having only daughters, and no son to be saved. It could be accurate to say that if you become just seriously enough uh, from now on, let's say from now, beginning now, in spite of whatever things happened before, there's a hope for us to be saved? Uh, well, the thing is with Varnashrama, to establish Varnashrama, or to, to do anything actually, Prabhupada says, uh, example is better than precept. Or one time he said, without example, your precept has no value. So if we're always saying all these things, there's no, you can't do this in society, you have to follow these principles, you can't get divorced and all that. 
we say all that, all that, and if we don't do it ourselves, and it's going to have no, it's not going to ha have, nothing's going to come about it. People will be, just think we're just, just foolish. Uh, you, you know, you're, you're saying we should, this house of society should be run, Varna Shrama and all these principles, and the husband should be like this, the wife should be like that, the children should be like that, but we don't do it ourselves, and they're not going to take us seriously. They won't take us seriously. And another thing I want to say that uh, Prabhupada Zosa mentions this in the seventh candle, eleventh chapter. One may think, well, you know, if I have to serve my husband and he's really a nonsense, I, I, do I just have to put up with it? And but Prabhupada mentions this in the anyway, the seventh candle, eleventh chapter, uh, that that if one's husband is a miscreant, uh, that means he engages in intoxication, meeting, illicit sex, and gambling, then a woman should not have to serve such a husband. Uh, she should uh, separate from him, but separation means that, that doesn't mean that she should remarry again. So, you know, one doesn't have to s serve a rascal husband. That's not, you know, what's being said here, you know. It, he has to be, at least follow the four regulator principles like that. So, we have to follow the you know, set show by example and try our best. And sometimes it's the children, we may try our best to make them Krishna conscious, but they just, uh, they have free will. They, they, everybody has a free will in this material world. It's, it's even said that Narakasura, uh, he became uh, a demon because of bad association. And he, even though he was a son of the Supreme Lord in the Mother Earth, and Adwaita Chari, he had six sons, and three of them were atheists, demons, you know. So this happens sometimes, you know. But we just have to try our best, you know. And if we try our best, then there's no sin on our part, you know. We don't incur any sin. Yes, Shivasvabha? behind you. So really the principle is to become a pure devotee. Just like Srila Prabhupada had so many disciples, are all of them going back home back to Godhead? Eventually they will because of their association with Srila Prabhupada. But we don't see that here. They're not, they're not all here. You know, whoever was joined in 1970, we don't see them here in the temple room. So what do we do? Do we meditate on that and, and, and try to understand that? That's very difficult. Uh, our position should be more focused on progressive, being focused on becoming pure devotees and delivering our descendants and our family line. Yeah, so becoming Krishna conscious, you know, we just deliver, you know, we deliver our family members like that and we go back to home, back to Godhead. But it's also, uh, we want to make Krishna, we want to make this our last life in this material world. Uh, because, uh, and by following these instructions, we could do that. Prabhupada says, don't, he, in, here in Los Angeles, he said, uh, don't come back to this mature world again. It's not going to be so easy the next time around. So, uh, we should become very serious in this lifetime, like that. Uh, yes, Balram? Um, it's, it's, uh, I, I read a remark by uh, Prabhupada that uh, actually, uh, Varna Ashram is great, it puts the human society in as being human beings. Mm -hmm. But higher than that, we're actually 
uh, aiming for Daivi Varna Ashram, where the center of our activities is Krishna. And there's a verse in the Bhagavatam that says that if you have Varna Ashram and you don't get attraction for loving service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then it's useless. Yeah, and well, I, yeah. well that, that's the meaning of Varna Ashrama is to uh, engage in worshiping Vishnu. Otherwise, the so-called so -called Varna Ashrama, the caste system, is essentially a degraded form of the original system. So when we actually say Varna Ashrama, that's what we mean, the original system of serving Vishnu, that it's not that I'm a Brahmana because I'm a born in a Brahmana family. Like nowadays, they say like that, oh, I'm a Brahmana, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm born in a, a Brahmana family, and they keep be, be, be eating meat and all sorts of doing all nonsense, and they think they're qualified. That, that is what we meant by that. Uh, it means by following the activities of, of what Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, and uh, that's really... Uh, uh, Varna Ashram and Prabhupada told us we should establish it, you know, not that we can become uh, candidates for Varna Ashram, but we have to show by example. Uh, you know, they said, well, you know, like they said in, 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 in February the 14th, 1977, and they, uh, they told Prabhupada, but devote, Prabhupada, devote, an, another point, he said, devotees are beyond Varna Ashram, they're beyond it, and Prabhupada said, if they're beyond it, why are they falling down? He said like that. And it's, and one devotee said, uh, oh, that the chanting Hare Krishna will, pl will replace a Varna Ashram. And Prabhupada said, it can replace it, but who, who will replace it? He said, of course, Lord Chaitanya said, I'm not a Brahmana, I'm a Shatri, I'm not a Vaishnava, I'm a Sudra. But he took sannyas. He took sannyas. So we have to understand that Actually, we're a servant of Krishna. That's our position. I'm not a Brahmana, Vaishya, Sudra. None of these things, American, Indian, I'm a servant of Krishna. But we simply have to show by example, just like if you're on a stage, uh, you're playing the part of a king or like that. You know, you're not a king. You're just playing the part. So we just have to play the part, you know. We, we have to understand that devotees are, all, are servants of Krishna. It doesn't matter if they have a man's body or a woman's body or this body or that body, that they're servants of Krishna. And we just have to all just play our parts and show by our own example, that's all. Okay. So we, uh, we could stop there. Jai, Ogloishi, Shishi, Guru, and Goranga.